or welcome to the third part this part we're going to make a digital asset from our uh, setup here so in houdini if you follow along you have a complete setup with uh, the branch and the leaves so at this stage we're going to select everything that we want in our tool so it's everything except from our input because this is still something that i want to feed in uh, from houdini so i can plug in a custom shape so with that uh, i will often just do a sub network it will make like one single node and with that we then also right click and then create digital asset or we can make a version one and this is more recommended for production you can always go from a normal digital asset to a version one so from now just just create a normal one so you can just call this tutorial script so then we have our menu so we can go to parameters and we can fill in custom values here so if we go back to our assets, so we have like this one node, which is our tool. And in here we have our logic as before. So for our parameters, we can to create a couple of them here. So for, for example, it'd be a good idea to have like this division control. Um, so I'm going to just drag and drop it in there and I can have that. So maybe we can give this a better name like input remeshing. Since it actually sort of like remeshes or actually voxelizes more the model, so it might be a good idea to have some control over that. Um, make sure we are not going like to zero, and we're just gonna fill in. This is the lowest value that we can use. Then further than that, uh, we can, for example, go here to this clipping node to define uh, the bottom part and the top part of the leaves. So we can also grab that over here and this will be the i would call it like maybe leaf ratio or something um and maybe we can call it like leaf uh, starting point or something so we know like that starting area then we have those three parts where we are scattering points to define those elements and i'm probably going to leave it as it is as i quite uh, like some of these setups you can of course grab values i may be going to grab here some of the seed values so global seed press apply so we can have a variation quickly then here we have then the actual uh, finding the branches and then here we have then the shape of the branch we could expose here for example the thickness or we can also here uh, have the deletion of them so maybe we can here grab the ratio and just say uh, delete uh, branches so the higher this number the more branches will be deleted uh, we can also go here to the scale of the branches so so in this case i actually might just grab the one from the sweep and this is actually then my main scale so i'm just going to grab here and call this a uh, scale uh, for branches so with this value we can actually notice that this is pretty small so what i can do here is i can just copy this number i'm going to just type in one and in the background here, if I click on that, we can see what is the logic behind this. And we can multiply this by that value, which in my case is this low value. So we now have a slider that, for example, goes from 0 to 2. So that will be easier to control. Uh, further than that, you can also control how many divisions you are spending on this. Right now, it's just set to 2. Then we go into our leaf scattering part. Uh, so here we already have like a slider for, I would say, the coverage. So I would just call it uh, coverage, coverage leaves. And we can go down here and we can also down here define uh, those dry leaves. We can just grab that. So in my case, they, these are dry leaf amounts. And maybe one more thing here could, for example, be the scaling. So we're going to grab here the minimum and then the maximum scaling of that. So probably going to give this better naming, of course. So minimum scale and then maximum scale and press apply. This can also be used here. And in this case, I can just copy the note and replace this one. So we can just overwrite this quickly here. So we are replacing that. So that's done. I have a few of them. Uh, like I always mention in most tutorials, you can do more. You can create more parameters. You You feel free to do as well to create a more and bigger and interesting menu, but don't go too crazy. And the last thing that I want to do here is actually creating an output node. 
Uh, so just to make sure that this is always my output result. So whatever I do here, this will always be my output. So I'm going to just press accept and then we have our sliders here. So visually it's actually not looking that interesting and we probably want to create some folders for this. So I'm going to go back to my asset and I'm just going to quickly make folders. So I can create a folder for, uh, I would say the base settings. Then a folder for things that have to do with, for example, the branches. And for example, a folder for uh, the leaves. Now we can just grab here that this is for base setting. Maybe the global seed could just be on the top. The leaf starting points, let's just bring that to leaves for now. Let's see. Deleting branches should be under branches. The scale of the branches. Uh, we have the leaf coverage and those are actually all of the leaves here. So we have that. So press apply and accept now. And my tool now looks like this. So there is definitely some more structure in here. So I can see that we have better structure. So at the top of my tool, I just have like a global uh, seed value. This is just really interesting if I quickly want variation. So let's say someone asks to you like, hey, give me 20 variations. We're just going to have to change this. So on our base setting, we have that remeshing. It's the slider itself is not in an ideal position. So I'd often again go back uh, and just go here to our slider. And maybe let's lower the maximum value uh, to 0.1 maybe and see how well that will work. So that's a bit better, some more spacing there. So then we have that branches, so we can control the scaling of that. If we want to increase this, uh, we can delete more of them. We can just delete all of them. We can keep all of them, but that of course will come with more polycans. So we can fine tune the amount of that. We then have our leaves, so we can say the starting point. So if we look at the bottom here, we can define that starting area. And as you can see, in this case, it might be like difficult to control depending on uh, the object here. So we might want to rearrange this uh, a bit better. So I'm just going to go back here, say leave starting points, and this can go from zero uh, to maybe two, for example, and press apply. So now we actually have like a better control here. So we can create something like this. We have like less leaves at the bottom here. Then we can go here to the coverage of the leaves. So we can have none. We can have full coverage, which will create a lot of them. Uh, we can also here have then uh, the different variation I had. And we have also, of course, here have the scaling. Uh, in this case, it's actually going to go to minus, which not happen. So we're going to go back into our properties and we can see that this is minus. So the lowest scale could, for example, be like 0.1 and it can go to 2, for example. And I'm going to do this to here as well. So 0.1 to value of 2 and press accept. So now we have these sliders. So it's better to control. And now to finally like test it, my tool. So I basically have my tool ready here to go. I can now just grab another object. So I can just plug in a box as well. So now I have this. And as you can see, like now we have multiple starting points as well. So that can be interesting uh, to have. So even if we could plug in a, a test geometry like the rubber toy, we should still be able to like see that it nicely follows those sh that shape. So you can see that does that this works really well. So I'm going to go back here and go with the starting point here. And now we actually have like full coverage of that shape. Yeah, also that jittering effect could also be an interesting parameter to play around with. So if we don't do this jittering, then you can see that we have like a perfect representation of this toy. And this is now nicely having like a growth of branches inside of them. So with that jittering, we can have some like slight offset variation. So that might be interesting to here again, go into our assets and quickly say, I want this value. And this is part of the branches. And I'm just going to call this a variation. So this is to add variation. Again, this is a small value, so I want to make sure that we're also having like a small range here so we can easily control that. So I'm going to go back and now here I have this value where we can have more or no variation. 
And one more thing before I finish off, I also see that maybe my scaling is too low. Like when we have scale zero, we basically don't see the branches, even though the wireframe is there. So maybe when I go back to my system, go to remapping and having the minimum scale zero means like us, basically means that it will just be zero. So better to give some slight value. So let's say 0.5. So as you can see, like we have something at least here. So you can play around with this until you find like a good value. So that was it for this video. And next video will actually then be opening this into a game engine, like Unreal, and see how well the tool works there and tweak. And maybe do like still a couple tweaks here and there to make sure it actually works well uh, inside of the game engine. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.